Vancouver Point Grey. Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, when the amount of the Premier's $50,000 a year stipend finally became public, the Premier had a strong defender, and I'm not talking about the leader of the BC Green Party. <laughs> but, but he could have been. Peter Brown, longtime BC Liberal Party fundraiser, couldn't see any problems with the Premier taking home $300,000 over five years from donations made to the BC Liberal Party. Now, that same Mr. Brown just sold his mansion in Vancouver for $31.1 million, $5.6 million over the assessed value. He sold it, Honourable Speaker, to a student. Now, when hardworking families see that the very person defending the Premier's stipend making tens of thousands of dollars in donations to the Premier's BC Liberal Party, selling his home for $31.1 million to a student, all while the finance minister says, nothing to see here in the Metro Vancouver housing market, they ask the question, is this government willfully blind to what's happening in the Metro Vancouver housing market because their donors like it that way? Minister of Finance. Uh, thanks, Madam Speaker. Let me uh, offer up for the, uh, the member and, and members uh, something that I am eminently uh, familiar with out in the part of the province that I call home, the Eastern Fraser Valley. I can name at least six families who have made this decision. Uh, whose children or child want to attend the Van Vancouver Film School or UBC, and they make the decision to purchase a purchase a home for that child, and it represents and it represents an investment. Well, members, And, Madam Speaker, they make that uh, decision as a family, and it represents an investment and a home for that, that child to live in. Now, uh, the members and the member uh, appears uh, offended uh, by that notion. And, uh, Madam Speaker, beyond that, I would suggest it's time for the member to get beyond the generalities. We've increased the property transfer tax, and I'm not going to comment on any specific transaction, but I can tell members this. On a 31... On a $31 million uh, purchase and sale, the property transfer tax is now, as a result of the increase that was included in the budget, nearly $1 million. Now, the member, as he is entitled, presumably, doesn't think that's enough. So if he wants to be taken seriously, why doesn't he stand up, because he's got another crack at it, and tell us what he thinks is enough? Tell us how much the vacancy tax that he would propose uh, to in impose is going to be. Tell British Columbians how much the speculation tax that he keeps talking about is going to be. Stop lurching from idea to idea in, in abstract and give British Columbians some specifics, Madam Speaker. Vancouver Point Grey on a supplemental. Honourable Speaker, I was hoping for the first time since I've been here that the Premier would stand up and talk about her commitment to providing student housing. <laughs> that won't happen. That won't Too expensive. Happen. Now, Honourable Speaker, this Finance Minister says no problem. No problem in Metro Vancouver's housing market, but a new study released yesterday says couples between the ages of 25 and 35 years old in Vancouver have the lowest discretionary income of anywhere in Canada. So low, it's actually negative, Honourable Speaker. Couples in the same age group in Victoria, the third lowest discretionary income of anywhere in Canada. Choosing to live in almost any other city in Canada means an extra $10,000 or more in discretionary income. To the Premier. Members. I don't know, is this a joke for the government, Honourable Speaker? Members. Really? You might want to tell that to housing them. crisis for families is not a joke. As long as the donors are happy, Honourable Speaker. 
To the Premier, who needs $240,000 a year to live in Metro Vancouver, how can she defend two of the three lowest discretionary income cities in Canada being British Columbia? Minister of Finance. Yeah, Madam Speaker, it, it is regrettable that the, uh, the member uh, appears uh, to want merely to deal in the abstract and not provide um, actual facts. Actual. Members. That was the voter's decision, you, wasn't it? You know, it's, it's, Madam Speaker, not the first time I have heard the opposition uh, propose tax increases for British Columbians and not want to tell them how much. Because that, of course, is what uh, they are uh, pr they are proposing. But look, back back to uh, back to good news, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, stats can. Oh. This house will come to order. Proceed. Thanks, uh, Madam Speaker, because uh, Stats Can has uh, posted their numbers for the country in terms of uh, economic growth and uh, for 2015 confirmed that not only has Canada, as British Columbia, led the nation again, uh, we are almost three times the national rate at 3% uh, economic growth, Madam Speaker. I know the, uh, the member for jobs was uh, talking about that uh, yesterday when she uh, spoke at the Canadian building. I'm sure members of the opposition who were there would have heard. Oh, well, of course, minute. they weren't there because they weren't invited, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Supplemental. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Members. Members. Please continue. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Now, you know, this minister has a lot of questions. He'll have a lot of time to ask questions when he and his government are sitting on this side of the yeah. <laughs> secret agenda in a private member's bill that the government can call any day if they'd like to pass it. Now, according to this finance minister, everything's under control, everything's normal. So a normal real estate market for this government is one where a student can scrape together $5.6 million over the assessed value and pay $31.1 million for a house in Vancouver. Now, that's a market where the average 25 to 35-year-old the average 25 to 35 year old in Metro Vancouver, Honourable Speaker, has negative income. Now, Honourable Speaker, if this is all systems normal for this government, I don't know what information it's going to take to convince them otherwise. So the finance minister says he's going to study the market himself personally and let us know if he sees a problem. Well, what information, Honourable Speaker, in his study will convince him that there's a problem with affordability in Metro Vancouver's housing market? Minister of Finance. Uh, look, Madam Speaker, and to the, the member, I don't want to leave the incorrect impression. I quite enjoy the exchange with the, uh, the Dauphin of the NDP. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, now I am troubled, Madam Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, there is uh, uh, clearly a, a market dynamic at, at play that I think is of concern to uh, people in particularly one part of British Columbia. And there seem to be emerging uh, uh, two, uh, two theories around approach that, and I have acknowledged this openly. 
Uh, I and the government believe that primarily where the, uh, the focus should be is on uh, improving supply and reducing some of the pressure that accrues from having way more people uh, looking for a, a finite uh, product. Uh, the opposition, from what I can gather, uh, Madam Speaker, takes a very different view. The member's colleague uh, yesterday from uh, Mount Pleasant it, in, in very clear terms described it as a demand problem. And it seems the opposition, given the chance, would address that in the way that the NDP traditionally addresses that. They would raise taxes and create uh, an economy that discourages people from coming to British Columbia. We think that's the wrong approach, Madam Speaker.